far as color mixing goes when we're working with pastel if you're used to painting where you mix the paints first like if you're trying to get like a warm brown and you mix a brown with a red or a brown with an orange you're used to mixing the paint like together on a palette and then you apply it well here if you're doing that with pastel you want to apply it kind of in layers or using like basically an optical mixing kind of effect and so just for this example I'm like doing a still life based on this table here and it's got these kind of pale blue pale green kind of turquoisey headphones and a blue JBL little Bluetooth speaker and some brown stuff here and what you want to do is like you want to take that blue and you want a really light blue well I've got some light blues but I want to mix my own so what I do is I go in here with like basically a blue pastel on top of some white I've already drawn and I just go in really lightly like this and I, I don't generally go for a lot of like this kind of mixing I did it over here where and I'll, I'll show you this in a minute like you can do it this way um, but I'm here I'm adding you know basically this is like what Surratt did with pointillism and Chuck Close does a version of this too in his painting where you're basically combining different colors in their natural state but they visually blend kind of in the eye they don't actually blend now if you want them to actually blend you can do this you know I, I just uh, smear them like that you know with my finger and I get this nice light blue and if I want that blue to be lighter, I'll just add more white to it. I'm like, yeah, you know, I want it to be maybe a little bit lighter here near this edge. So I'm going to put a little more white along here like that, okay, and blend that. That looks kind of nice. Personally, I like a little more texture. That's just my, how I roll. So, you know, I would like basically put these really tiny little lines here, like, like that little dots basically, which again is kind of what uh, Seurat was doing when he was doing his post-impressionist pointillism stuff. You know, something like that. So I don't know if you can, hopefully you can see this closely, but I'm just putting, just barely tapping the pastel like that to get that kind of effect. Looks nice. Um, if I'm doing something a little more complex like with those headphones, um, I need to have like at least three colors involved. It's like it's a kind of pale green, but there's a little bit of blue in it too, and all the greens that I have in my kit um, here, these are Rembrandts, by the way, which are awesome pastels. Uh, Sennelliers are fine; they're a little soft for me, but I like the Rembrandts. So I'll use like this kind of uh, this this like regular kind of like cool green. Like I'm using that instead of like a like a warmer green like this or the guys like that. You know, like like a like a lime green. I don't want to use that kind of chartreuse thing. So I'm gonna just go in and put a little green here, looking at my. And I'm basically, you know, looking observationally at the headphones, you know, and just trying to gauge a feel for the color. So I'm putting in some green, and you can see that compared to that, they're a little too green. So I want to, like, kind of blue them down a little bit. So I'm going to use this blue, you know, add that in to make it more of a blue green. See, now, see, you can, again, if you're looking really closely, you can see the individual colors. But from a slight distance, they will appear to optically mix. Again, this is what we talk about with optical mixing, Seurat and post-impressionism and pointillism and all that stuff. And they're uh, a little bit on the, I'd say, light side. So like up, up here, I want to like darken this down. So I'm going to add a little bit of this kind of darker gray, you know, just to give it a little shadow and help neutralize the color so it's not quite so saturated. And then along the top, you can see these highlights where the light's hitting them really well. So I really want to get a good highlight along there like that, boom, you know. And some of this area, I want it to be lighter too, so I'm gonna add a little bit more white into the blue and the green. It does require a fair amount of patience uh, the good news is you can just you can do this like ad infinitum like you can just keep doing this and doing this until you get the color that you want um, you, it's kind of hard to build up too much uh, of the pastel you spray on the fixative yeah I'm not going to do it now but you just spray on some uh, spectrafix which is the non-toxic fixative I use and I just spray that on top and then you can uh, work back into it again at a later session if you want to do that looking at the uh, that Bluetooth 
thing. Obviously the blue's a little too intense. It's a little bit too uh, blue <laughs> and it's a little too light. So I'm actually gonna add in um, a little bit of black in here, just gently. You know, a little black goes a long way. So I'm just gonna do a little bit along that bottom here and along the side for now. And here I'm using a deeper blue. It's a different blue pastel than I was just using. It's, uh, this, is, this is an ultramarine deep and this is this is ultramarine deep and so does this. This is a deeper blue. <laughs> like, why does it say the same thing? Anyway, uh, so I'm gonna put the blue on top of that. And they actually will kind of mix, you know, the way that paint would mix if you put them together. So by getting the blue in there, now it's a lot darker. It's still blue, but it's not quite so saturated. I mean, that's a pretty gray blue that you're seeing there. Um, and I want to do that around the edges too. Another solution that you might want to try is I like, try working, instead of with black, try working with brown. A great way to mix your own blacks without them being too black, because black can really kill color quickly, is to combine like a dark brown, like a raw umber or something like that, with an ultramarine like this, and you'll get something that's a dark gray, but it's richer. Um, it doesn't you know, have that color killing quality that black can have. So my only tip is you just want to be careful with the black because it really can kill whatever color you're mixing in with it. Just go really gently with it. Um, and if you need to add more, add more, but just add a little bit of a time. There's no rush. One of the great things about pastels or what they have taught me is the virtues of patience because <laughs> I like things to happen really fast and you really can't do that with pastel. You kind of have to let go, you know, and be willing to go back in, like looking at this. Now maybe I want to go in with a lighter blue, like this kind of blue, uh, and go in for these highlights here, you know, and along here, and along here. See what I mean? So, you know, I'm just playing around and if it doesn't work, I'm like, ah, it looks dumb or I'm not happy with the effect that I got or the colors I chose. You can just, again, just color back in on top of it as long as you uh, like to. So I'm looking at these, uh, the headphones, they're not bad. They're getting a little bit closer. Maybe I want to put in a little black on those guys too. Just a little bit here, a little bit down on the bottom. And then I won't leave that like that. I'll go back in again on top of that with the blue. There you go. See, so just push that around. And it's darker, it's a little bluer. It looks more like it has a three-dimensional, it looks like it has more volume as you rotate from this kind of rim light, highlight thing on the top, underneath, like that. And of course, blow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's basically kind of how you do it uh, and a lot more to do, but I uh, just wanted to give you a quick introduction to, you know, color mixing and, and how it differs when you're working with pastel from working with oil paint or any other kinds of paint. So, see you later.